Welcome back to Epic Hay Fever, the channel where we pride ourselves on bringing you top chest analysis while dying from hay fever, or allergies as you might say in the US. Now I'm going to do my best to make this a rapid recap so you don't hear me droning on too long, half dying before I sneeze all over the camera. But this has to be a quick one anyway because it's Blitz Chess. It's Magnus Carlsen with white against D. Gukesh with black. It's the Norway Blitz that preceded the classical part of the tournament. So I'm looking back at some of these old classics I couldn't get to on the day. Magnus here kicks off with b3. Now stick around because not only do we see some craziness in the opening, uh, Magnus does some like Houdini-like stuff to escape a crazy pawn structure and then we get the most insane pawn race. So Gukesh, he goes e5 on the board here. One of the classic ways to already blunt the bishop. The pawn's attacked, it's defended and now c4 sets up a Sicilian but with colours reversed. And now d5, not the main move by miles. Normally you'd see knight f6, because now after captures, the queen has to recapture. Now it gets hit with a tempo. It retreats to e6, kind of an ugly looking square, blocking the bishop. But like said, just don't hold too much stock on the opening. This is blitz. So knight f3, don't kick on with the pawn, or knight g5 hits the queen and then wins that pawn. So bishop d7 develops, aggressive intentions as we'll see, because e3 from Magnus and castles queenside. And this e3 move's already kind of interesting, because going back, you could go d3, you could go g3, bishop g2, queen c2, rook c1, a3, castles queer, kingside, all that kind of solid standard stuff. But Magnus, he wants to shake it up, creates this kind of uh, Swiss cheese, holes around the king structure, we get bishop e2, f5 from Gukesh, ignore all these question marks and misses, you know, they're minor misses and things, this is blitz chess, and now Magnus just castles. The computer is screaming for d4, take some central space, don't leave this as a backwards pawn, even though you're pushing with queen opposite rook. But Magnus castles, e4, knight g5, the queen moves, and f4. And this is one ugly looking pawn structure. This is a backwards pawn, gonna be a weakness forever now in the middle game, but Magnus is just going for some crazy play here. So h6, drops back the knight. You know, you'd never wanna capture on Passant, activate a bunch of white pieces. Now knight f6 played, the rook comes to the semi-open file, King b8 steps to the side, and a3 prepares the usual counterplay. Bishop e6 targets this pawn, opens the rook. Now b4, we get queen d7, and we already see the problem with this horrible pawn here. If you go bishop uh, rook c2, for example, then there's bishop b3 winning an exchange. So Magnus drops back his knight to b1, and I've highlighted the knights here. I mean, look at them. They are some of the ugliest knights you're ever going to have with the white pieces on move 16, right? So knight e7 now from Gukesh. Not entirely clear on the point of that move. Maybe there was something about b5 he didn't like, or bishop b5, you know, split second decisions. Look at Magnus's time already, a minute down. We get bishop e5 hitting a nasty threat on c7, and so this knight centralizes and covers that pawn. Now bishop c4, looking for activity. The king goes to a8, comes all the way off this diagonal. We get queen b3, adding some pressure in the center. The knight now comes back. It does hit this bishop, and actually, if black takes there, the computer shows that's good for white to recapture with the pawn and finally bring this knight back into the game. So it wants to develop this knight here as the best move. But bishop b2 played, natural to want to keep the bishop pair, especially when you see this diagonal, and now rook g8 comes off that diagonal, prepares to push the g-pawn. So knight c3, pawn g5, and now with the king side starting to get ripped open, queens on the board, who knows if this one's going to switch, well Magnus goes for some liquidation, goes for what he's famous for, an end game. Can he grovel and hold on here? So rook c2 covers the pawn, g4 kicks the knight, a5 now played, you'd love to go b5 but the rook covers the square. So Magnus captures, the rook takes back, now there's pressure on the a3 pawn, 
horrible position for Magnus. He covers with that pawn, and I don't love the next move from Gukesh. You know, the computer wants, say, bishop d6 here or rook d5, but I like bishop d6. You just keep the pressure here and you keep pieces on the board. Gukesh has more space, Magnus is cramped. This bishop's having a tricky life defending this. After bishop g7, well, Magnus gladly exchanges a pair of minor pieces and then tries to bring this horsey back into the game, right? I've been watching chess card, chess.com commentary too long, calling it a horsey, I'll be calling it a pony next. Rook d7 now played, so pressuring down this file. Now the knight comes into g3 and it pressures f5, and this is the big source of counterplay now for Magnus. You take that one and the whole pawn chain starts looking shaky. So king b8 played, rook a to a2, covers a bit more here, connects those rooks. The knight comes back to d8, hopping into here, but also now freeing these pawns. So king f2, knight e6, king e2 covers that pawn, frees the rooks for activity. We get pawn to c6, preparing things like b5 once this one's covered. And now a4 from Magnus looks to play against that kind of thing. King c7 and this rook now slides to b2. So he's begging Gukesh to take this pawn, then his knight will pick up f5. So correctly, Gukesh doesn't do it, centralizes that rook. Now we get rook b4 sliding up, covering this pawn, and the knight comes to c5, adding pressure. And here, Magnus should just bring the second rook, add the defense. But he goes for a counter shot kind of defense, saying, okay, if knight captures, I'm crashing through here. But this is a complete blunder that Gukesh misses. They're both now really low on time. But he could have just taken like this, because after this one captures, knight takes back. Well, obviously, you haven't got the doubled rooks anymore. You don't crash through here. But, okay, Gukesh misses it. He's a bit responsive to Magnus's threats. Now we get the rook coming behind the pawn, but that one is a mistake because we get knight d3, hits the rook, it comes back here, it can't come to b2, stay with the other rook, and now b5. And you can't capture that one or your rook drops on a2. So Magnus forced to kick on with pawn a5, but now b4. This second rook attacks the a5 pawn and look at this absolute monster knight supporting the running pawn on this square, which was weakened horrifically earlier. This knight still pretty dodgy, right? So a6 was played, king b6. Now this one comes here to defend, but rook b5 comes behind the pawn. You're just gonna use the b pawn as a distraction, move a rook, then pick up this one. Now, king d1 played, pawn b3. Rook a3, the pawn carries on. Rook b1, now we see chops here, the king recaptures, knight e2, and if I pause here at king a5, it's pretty much minus five. How is this one just not over? The knight, the pawn, the rook, the king, they're all more dominant than their counterparts. But okay, what's the Houdini stuff that Carlson does here? Well, he centralizes the knight, hits this rook, and this pawn, and in the time pressure, we see rook b6 covering the pawn. Really logical move, but what should you play? Well, king a4 is good, because yes, you can take here, but this is just game over. The king is marching in, and if you try and bring the white king to stay with the rook, well, you can just force it away in a variation like this. With the second pawn running, you have to go, and now the rook's dropping off. You know, this is a sample line. And just coming back here, after king a4, if instead of taking the rook, white takes the pawn, well now rook c5 is a killer, hitting that minor piece, but also threatening this one, and that's just game over. But Gukesh goes rook b6, understandable, but suddenly the king comes to c2, again king a4 best, but not played. We get c5, trying to get rid of that knight, but this is even worse because now the knight takes on f5. It's gone from minus five to zeros. The computer suddenly calls this a level position. So rook b4 now played, threatening rook c4 check. That would be deadly. So knight d6 covers the square. Now the king comes this way, looking to get rid of that knight, but this pawn now drops off the board. Great tactic from Magnus Carlsen, because if you recapture, well then this knight drops, no longer defended by the pawn, 
Then this one's dropping too. You know, you can defend, but the king comes back. That's plus two for white. So instead, we see the pawn kick on, defend this knight once again, but that's a massive pawn to have won. Now the knight comes to c3, and Carlson's got his own running pawns. So king c5, pawn f5 played. This is a 100 move game, but stick with it. The pawn raise, the best is yet to come. We get king d6, f6 played, the king comes across, rook f1. Now the uh, rook comes back to b7 and knight e4, supports the pawn a bit more. You would land a check if this knight ever moves. So rook a7 now played, also looks to invade with rook to a1, so the pawn now kicks on. Giving a pawn, yes, but distracting the rook, we get takes and this is the tactic that Carlsen has seen. He checks, picks up a second pawn, and because the knight is now loose, well, after it goes and checks, you finally pick up the dangerous B pawn. But Gukesh is picking up these. What a wild end game we've now got on our hands. Because after knight e1 back, d4, this one coming here, well, now Carlsen is losing another pawn. This is how the game progressed. And this is the position we reached in the thumbnail. Who is winning this pawn race? Well, after pawn to g3, Magnus makes a blunder here. What was his best move to play? Well, it was moving on with the pawn with pawn d6 check. Now, if the king steps back, then the pawns carry on marching. I mean, the computer only gives this a draw, but this was the way to go. And if the king steps up, just coming here, now if knight d2, which we see in the game, pawn carrying on, knight here, hitting the g pawn, pawn carrying on, well, now you can check with that king on e6. The king takes the pawn, you can take here, you cover the square, I mean this is just a sample line right, but it leads to a draw. So d6 check the move. Carlsen plays this one first, coming back to Gukesh's threats, but now pawn h3, knight f3, but not an exchange of knights, no, the knight checks from g4. Great move. The king is being shouldered away from those pawns, or shepherded away you'd maybe say. Now the pawn carries on, and the queen is just unstoppable. So Carlsen grabs the material he can, and this is technically a lost endgame. But seconds on the clock, tricky knight, connected passes, anything can happen here, right? So the queen pins, the king unpins, check, now the king back. Another queen move to attack this pawn. The pawn kicks on, the king goes, the knight comes round, and more checks. Gukesh just builds up a bit of time on the clock here and then brings his queen around once more to attack this king and attack one of the pawns. Is it here? No, it's soon. Okay, at the minute he's just building up checks, right? It's hard to remember all the details of a 100 move game. The knight finally blocks that check. The king slides across and now in a moment we see the pawns kick on all the way to the sixth rank. The king steps back. Another check. Look how menacing this is getting, right? But how do you make progress? We'll check. The king comes back. We get knight d4, covering the e-pawn. Check, the king goes. And after queen d6, here Carlsen, he just had to make another king move. Keep forcing Gukesh to find a winning combination or conception with the queen and king. But what Carlsen does is play pawn to d7, check. And what he's anticipated here is that if the queen takes, bang, you check here, that's a drawn game. And if the king takes, same problem, but you check from f5. But what he completely forgot about, overlooked, was this takes on d7. Big smiles all round, because Carlson's just shaking his head. He resigns the game instantly. The second pawn will drop. Okay, that's a lost one. So I hope you enjoyed that 97 move game. Thanks for sticking with it. And if you want to see another epic game of chess, check out the video on screen and don't forget to subscribe to never miss a future video. Hope to see you soon.